Okay, let's begin talking about motion in the Earth's gravitational field, or if you will, Carter, potential energy. Potential energy. So yesterday we had a great old time talking about kinetic energy. Formula for kinetic energy? They are. Yeah, mv squared over 2. So today we're going to come up with a potential energy formula. By the way, if you've never seen the abbreviation for energy. NRG. Yeah. How many have you written now? You should have written kinematics, dynamics, projectiles, momentum. Potential energy. Carter, are you ready to go? Because I'm going to start writing stuff down and you might want to as well. That will require a writing tool in your hand, some paper to write on. Here we go. So, let's talk about vertical work and potential energy, right? As you lift something. So, the work done in lifting a mass, a vertical distance D or H, either letter is used, is stored inside the body as increased potential energy. And as always, please don't feel the need to write everything down. Increased potential energy. One of the letters that they use for potential energy is U. I have no idea why. I guess other ones you might see would be E, energy, P, potential, right? Or if you want to go with PE, I guess that might be one as well. So there's sort of three different, I really have no idea, I like to make the joke about momentum, but it's the next letter. I have no idea why U is potential. But basically, as you lift something a certain distance, as you do work against gravity, right, um, that energy is stored as potential energy. So that work done is converted to potential energy. Remember, W equals FP. And since F is equal and opposite to FW, right, like the applied force up, Carter, paying attention, man. Yeah. Now you're playing with a calculator. FW is equal to MG. And if the D is H, then W equals FD becomes U equals MGH, right? The MG is the F, and the D becomes H, and so you get U equals MGH. And that is literally the formula derivation for potential energy. That's how simple it is. Last time gravity times time. It's the work done. Work done times the distance. Mug. Okay, so let's do a little sort of scenario here where a five kilogram object is placed eight meters high and we're going to, whoops, this five kilogram object is going to fall. And what's going to happen to the amount of energy? Potential will decrease, but kinetic will increase. Will it be equivalent? I'm going to show you mathematically that it will be, right? Energy must be conserved. So, how much energy we got at the top? U equals mgh, 5 times 9.8 times 8, the height, 392 joules of potential energy. I'm going to make that a smidge greater. Right? We got 392 joules of potential energy just sitting there up on that ledge. I should say relative to that point there, I guess, right? Like if I take the foam ball and it's sitting on the table and I raise it, say, a meter, it has a certain amount of potential energy relative to the table. But over here, it's actually got more potential. Okay, how, conservation of energy, how can I have, let's say this is one meter, Let's say the mass here is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 times 9.8 is 0.98. So we've got 0.98 of joules here. How can I have like twice that here when all I did was move it sideways? Where did that extra energy come from? Extra height, but it had to have come from somewhere. 
I, did I do any work doing this? No. Did? <laughs> Originally, yes, from the sun. Because, like, at one point you put it up on the Exactly. Table? At one point, it was on the floor, or maybe not, right? And it was lifted up to the side. What if it was never, ever on the floor? What if it was shipped in a box here? I came in, I put it down, and it's never, ever been on the floor here. I still carried it up the stairs, right? Someone, somewhere, lifted it this high, right? And so now it's just doing this. Now that energy has... Is the energy still here? Sure, because if I do this, right, it's just there. I just can't get any more out of it because it can't go past it. Sure, but it can't go past it. That's way more than I wanted to talk about. I'll just make for people to write that out. Okay, how much kinetic energy does it have right now? Would you agree zero? How come? Not moving. What have I got over here? The total energy then, ET, you know, of the movies, going home. See, lots of good jokes here. ET, total energy. The total energy is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, which in this case is 0 plus 392. Would you agree the total energy is 392? Okay. Now, I know on the next slide, you're going to see, uh, I'm going to move the ball down here, and I'm going to redo all those calculations. You're going to see all these calculations again. Please do not write them down again, right? It's just there for visual reference. I'm not sure why they're covered up again. They shouldn't be. Okay, so there they are there. Now I've got it here. Now it's at a height of... Three meters. How much potential does it have? Can it have potential even though it's moving? Yeah, it's still at a certain height, right? So it has, oh, oh yeah, five is our mass, right? Five times 9.8 times three. So this distance here is three. So it, it still has 147 joules of potential. Has it gained any kinetic? How do we know? Because it's moving. How much kinetic has it gained? Well, we're going to look at it two different ways. I could figure out how fast it's going. Vx squared equals Vx squared plus 2AD. By the way, I sarcastically say thanks to those people that tell grade 11s how to do problems with these formulas. Created a monster. Supposed to be like a you know secret for grade twelve. Right? It's like a special club. Yeah. Excellent point though. Yes. The distance fallen is five. Right. It's at a height of three, so it's accelerated for five. So n zero. So we got a final velocity of nine point nine which gives us kinetic energy of EK mv squared over 2, 5 is mass, 9.9 squared, 245. It has 245 joules of kinetic energy because it's moving at a certain speed joule. Has energy been conserved? How do you know? Because if you take this one plus that one, you should get 392. Now, is it going to be perfect kind of thing? There's, there's a good chance there could be some rounding here, right? So you might be off by maybe a half a joule or a full joule, depending on how you round something. But for the most part, energy should be clear. Does that always happen in real life? No, as objects fall, they, there is air resistance. There will be some friction. There will be some heat, right? Certainly astronauts that enter the Earth, the atmosphere, know all about that. So far, so good. Next slide. And I've just moved everything up there again. That's all just repeats. All right? Okay, now I'm going to say, I think, oh, okay, well, delta U, what does that stand for? Change in potential. So the change in potential 
is the final potential minus the initial potential. 147 was the final. The initial was 392. Delta U is equal to 245. What's going to be the change in kinetic? What do you know? Energy is conserved. Well, they're going to hear what I was talking about there. Oh, can you hear like us in the background? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, I was listening to it tonight, and the idea said something, and it was so. So, if, if the question asked how fast you'd be going, right, the potential energy would be equal to the EK, which would be one half mv squared. So, the EK at the bottom would be your 392. One half, the mass was 5 velocity squared, right? So it'd be 392. The 2 has to go up to the other side. So times by 2, divide by 5, take the square root. So you can do these questions from an energy standpoint. 392, yeah, right, 5, right? 5. 392 times 2, divide by 5, the square root. 12.5 meters per second. Is there new one though? No. Oh. Yeah. They're like from the 60s. Okay, so Rocky, the one kilogram flying squirrel, is initially 10 meters up on a tree and he jumps down to the ground. Find his total energy at the start, his velocity after he's fallen six meters or he's four meters from the ground. So basically, I'm redoing that question that we just did. Right? You guys could probably do this in fact. Based on that, no? What's his total energy at the start? All potential. So it's equal to MGH. He's conveniently only one kilogram. And he's a convenient 10 meters up. No need for a calculator. 98 what? 98 joules of energy. What is his velocity after he's fallen 6 meters? Now we could do the VF squared, VI squared 2AD thing, right? But let's do this from an energy standpoint. So if he's fallen 6 meters, that means he's 4 meters from the ground. So let's find his potential. Now if I go U4, does that make sense to you? Yeah, his potential energy at the 4 meter mark. So you might see that in the solution somewhere. I'm just sort of giving you a heads up. One meter or one mat, one kilogram times nine point eight times the height of four. Nine point eight times four. Nineteen point six. Thirty-nine point two. So if he has thirty-nine point two joules of potential energy, then how much kinetic does he have? E K plus U, I guess. So 98 is equal to the EK plus 39.2. So he has 98 minus 39.2 joules. Oh yeah, you like to divide by two, right? Not fifty point eight? But you got new contacts. No. Oh. One V squared over two. So V is going to be square root of two times. That's probably a little longer, right? But it's sort of, I just want you to see the energy conservation sort of method.
These are these are pretty straightforward, eh? Like they're not. You guys can do this. That's what I got. No? Yeah, that seems about right. Oh yeah? No? I got ten point eight. Two times fifty-eight point eight. It's not one on one point six times. No, it's fifty fifty-eight point eight. At one time we had fifty point eight here, but that was wrong. It's fifty-eight point eight. Yeah. Yep. How many have I got here? Just three. Do I try this one? You guys try this one. How much room you got there? Not very much? Oh. Is that enough? Good point. It's like what Mr. Kota used to say when people asked him if you could freeze something, you know? Can you freeze that? You get it cold enough. Good old Mr. Kota. You want to try it or no? Let's try it. I'll give you a bit of a hit. Two kilogram ball is launched at ground level at 50 meters straight up. So this time it's not being dropped. It's in fact going up, right? You don't like that. So it has an initial velocity of 50. So in other words, what's its potential at the start? Zero. Zero. All of the energy is kinetic. So what's the total initial energy? Well, it's all going to be kinetic. Can you find out how high it goes? The energy wave. Yeah, because all of this kinetic energy is going to be converted into potential, right? So you're going to find your kinetic energy, then you're going to make that the potential energy, and then you're going to solve for H. You try A and B while I go do a test. I'll do it right away. Okay, so the total initial energy is all kinetic, so EK is equal to MB squared over 2. So the mass is 2, the velocity is 50 squared all over 2. So 2 over 2 cancels, right? 50 squared, 5 squared is 25, 2,500. All of that kinetic energy must become potential. So U equals MGH, 2,500 is equal to 2 times 9.8 times the height. So H is going to be 2,500 divided by 2 times 9.8, which is 19.6, you're right. That sounds about right. Easy stuff, right, Sean? Yeah. Okay, well, let's ramp up the challenge level a little bit. What is the kinetic energy when it's risen halfway off the ground? Right there, halfway. Would it be half of 2,500? No. Would it be 1,250? No? How come? You just got a gut feeling? But, but is it going to be 1,250? Why? Okay, well, let's find out. Kinetic energy when it's risen halfway off the ground. So in other words, um, the height would be 127.55 divided by 2, right? So 128 divided by 2 is going to be 60, 63 point something. 775? Let's say 78. Okay, so how do I find the kinetic energy? I'd have to know how fast it's going. We don't. I could do that. How would I, would I, can I figure out what the potential energy is at that point? Couldn't I figure out what the potential energy is and then subtract? Wouldn't that work? I think so, right? So the mass would be 2, 9.8 here. My height is this new 63 number.
I get 1250. Well, it is 1250.088 actually. But that's due to rounding. Which means the EK would be 2500 minus that 1250. Of course, it's 1250. So halfway up, it has exactly half as much potential as it does connect. I'm going to change this question. I don't. I don't like that question. I bet you sometimes you wish you could do that, eh? Well, and the reason I don't want to do it is because I'm going to have to do this all again. What if I just say, what's this? What's the velocity when it's risen halfway? Can I just do that? Because it means it's going to be the same thing, right? So what is, how fast is it going to be going at that halfway mark? Is it going to be going half of the 50? Is it going to be 25? Now you don't know what to say, right? B is the square root of 1250. Thirty-five point four. It's not half. Why? Because it's v squared. So even though it has half the kinetic energy, it's not going half speed. Watch out for that. Little sort of hint for the future. Ready to try one? Try this one on your own. I'm going to hand out the practice set right away. We got a three kilogram mass thrown upward at 30. So same as before, it rises to a maximum height and then lands on a five meter high ledge on the way down. So it's doing this. Find the total energy. Find the maximum height of rise, so same part as the question we did before. And then the velocity just as it lands on the ledge. How fast is it going right there? At the very least, you can do A and B. Okay, total energy is pretty easy. U equals, oh no, total energy starts all kinetic, right? EK is MB squared over 2. So it's going to be 3 times, the velocity is 30 squared all over 2. Looks like we're going to need a calculator here, actually, right? 30 squared is 900 times 1.5. No, I can do this, man. 1350. 1350 joules, right? <laughs> Maximum height of rise. So again, all becomes potential. U equals MGH. 1350 is equal to 3 times uh, that pesky 9.8, if it was only 10. It's 45.9? Okay. I'm halfway down here, so I don't know if it's 45.9, right? That's what you said. 45.9. How fast is it going just as it lands on the ledge? What's the... What's the energy way to do it? Find out the potential energy when it's 5 meters off the ground, which is going to be 3 times 9.8 times 5, 147. Therefore, the kinetic energy is going to be 1350 minus 147. So it has 1203 joules of kinetic energy. These are easy. Right, am I right?
What do you say? One, four, four eh? One, oh, well, probably one there, I guess, too, right? Four. For the subtraction part? Yeah. Five. I think what I'll do is i got to make up a pre-test for three equal? 28.3. Um, I'll make a pre-test up tonight. I'll get it to you tomorrow. I'll have a, I guess i got to have at least one work question. One kinetic energy question, one potential energy, and one spring. Great. Sounds like fun. Um, so I handed out, there's some word problems there for you to practice with. We'll do springs tomorrow. Lab on Monday. And then you tell me when to write next week. I'm thinking not too many people will be wanting right to write Tuesday, but if you happen to be away those last two days, then it's a possibility. Anybody go on like leaving early? You are right. When do you leave? Um, Thursday morning. Okay, so you got to write.